Hi, everyone. This is Leslie Law, the producer and MC of Sandbox Radio. Thanks so much for listening. The show you're about to hear, An Unexpected Twist, is the first episode of our second year, and we couldn't be more excited about what we have planned for the upcoming season. If you're in the Seattle area, come see our first Greatest Hits show live at Bumbershoot, Seattle's annual music and arts festival on September 3rd at 7 p.m. And don't miss our next episode of all new material, Sandbox Radio 6, Something Wicked This Way, on October 1st at West of Lennon. And now, episode 5, An Unexpected Twist. Sandbox Radio musical guests John Engerman and Heather Curtis Mullen with a sandbox radio orchestra led by Jose Juicy Gonzalez. So sit back and relax as we take you into the world of sandbox radio live. angel, but not the sort with wings and a harp and a halo. Markimes are the black ops. We do things other angels can't or won't. Me, I'm a talker, sub reverse curse. Upstairs pulled me out of retirement for a mission down in this soggy town, but when it was done I didn't go back. I had questions. And the answers weren't up above in the fix. Now I'm walking neutral, half fallen, in what we angels call the show. But I gotta watch my back, cause things can always get uglier. Previously on Markheim. Can you watch Black Blanches for me again for a few days? Maybe a week? Why? I'm going home. You can't go back home. Why? You know why. My hand, it won't stop burning. I gotta get some relief. The nurse at the clinic said there ain't nothing wrong with me, but... Wrong? Me, you've been blessed. Blessed? How you figure? You got a dose of the holy fire in that hand. So long as it stays attached, you ain't never gonna die. Get rid of the ticket. Throw it in the sound. Good. Now get back up to the fix. I'll go. Just, I never have seen anything like this water. Look how the moon plays in it. Light, shadow, light, shadow. There's nothing like that in the fix. Nope. Can't I stay and watch it? Just for a while. You're pushing it. This is Sam's town. I can't protect you. I'm walking neutral. Will you stay with me? Sorry, cherub. Two angels together in the show. It's a liability. And now, episode five of Markheim by Paul Mullen. But what did you just throw in the fountain? A penny. Why? For a wish. A wish? Yeah, you gotta wish for things. You do? Don't you? I, um, 
don't think I ever wished for anything, Liv. Well, then you gotta try it. Here, Mark. I think I have another penny. Yeah, there. Toss it in and make a wish. Uh... It can be anything. It doesn't have to be important. Uh, okay. I wish I'd never... Stop. What? You can't wish something done, undone. You can't? No. Okay. Uh, then I wish I could figure out this... Stop! What? You can't say it out loud. It won't come true. Oh? Markheim. Liv? Markheim! Who's there? What's wrong with him? It's almost like you're sleeping. What, like the meat do? Yeah. Disgusting. Liv? Right. <laughs> Touch him up. Right. Ah! On your feet, Markheim. Feet? Markheim, you are in the presence of his ascendancy, the Archangel Regal. What the fuck? Touch. Right. Ah! On your feet and show the septarch of all celestial dominations the proper respect. Of course. Apologies, Sar Regal. Blessings be upon you. You may dispense with the formalities. There's simply no time. Our business is urgent. And this moisture is most repellent. <laughs> you were visited by a cherub several earth turns ago. That's right. I sent him back up to the fix. Huh? Uh, sorry. The C.O.G. Mm. Well, he didn't make it back to the city of God, did he? What? Seattle powers say the cherub was assaulted and abducted by a choker demon. Or as you might say, the chub got smoked down to the crisp. <laughs> Shit. I... I left the chub at the water. He wanted to watch it for a while before heading back. Cherubs are strictly administrative, cloud side only. You would have been right for the slaughter and protected down here. I couldn't stay. Two angels together in the show would have been a provocation. A provocation to whom? Whom else? Sam. Why would you need fear the Satan? Are you not under the direct auspices of the Septarchy? No. I'm done. Walking neutral. Neutral? Yeah. Neutral? Yeah. I cut a deal with Sam. Ah. So because you cut a deal with the eternal adversary of holiness, you felt obliged to leave your celestial colleague utterly defenseless. I warned him. So you knew what would happen to him. I knew what could happen to him if he lingered. He's working for Sam and set the job up. I don't work for Sam. Take my word for it. Angels can't lie. Fallen angels can. Do I look fallen? Touch. Right. Ah! That's enough, Markheim. If you intend to prove your innocence, you need to come back to the COG. No thanks. I'm through with the fix. I'm walking neutral. It's my understanding that this is my prerogative. Of course. No one can force you to return, nor would wish to. We're not demons, after all. What is so entertaining for you down here, Markheim? Nothing. But I got some questions I'm looking to answer. What sort of questions? The clockwork my mission fit. As far as I can tell, it dead ends. That alone is... Curious. Yes, indeed. Curious. Nevertheless, if you are walking neutral, and I take you at your word, then I worry for your safety. Samael never breaks his bond, it's true. But he has a very nasty habit of making his deals much more unpleasant than the second parties expect. I'll take my chances. Well, I choose not to take chances. Therefore, I am leaving you these three dominations for protection. Oh, what? <laughs> if two angels in the show was a provocation, what do you think four is going to be? What's your game? Keep him in sight at all times. Right. I wager Brother Samuel would be less tempted to pest you with them around. I can't be responsible for three cloud-foggy doms. He's got a lot of nerve. We're stuck watching your ass. Goodbye, Mark. I'm heaven's blessing upon you. And also with you, Sar Regal. Yes. And so the Archangel left me with three guards. Not a big fan of company, even less of dominations. Fierce, but no street sense. Fix cops. Still, next morning, I decided to make the most of my posse. I want my dog back, Stank. <laughs> Fuck you, Mark. 
Liv gave Black Francis to me to take care of. And you killed her. Lives in Oregon, Stank. Everybody who actually lives on the street knows it. Fuck you. And who are these three ugly goons with you? More angels? That's right. They're my crew. Follow me everywhere. Three bitches ain't gonna keep you safe, my kind. No matter how ugly they are, everybody's gotta sleep. Not angels. Where's Did? Like you don't know. I don't know. In the hospital, asshole. He cut off his hand. He says it was your idea. Shit. The EMTs came quick enough to save it. Docs at Harborview sewed it back on. Shit. Did he say if it still burns? You fucking kidding me. Why should I tell you shit? Did he say or not? He, he says it. It doesn't bother him anymore. Oh, boy. Okay. Tell him I'll come see him soon. You go anywhere near him, I'll kill you. Good luck with that, Stank. Things can always get uglier. Right, Marky? Remember that, did you, Stank? Well, good. Start believing it. <laughs> well, that was a bust. Me hoping the kid was smart enough to be intimidated by my celestial shadows. Guess I'll have to come up with something else to get Liv's dog back. And Didge cut his hand off to spite the eternal fire. Didn't think he had it in him. Now they sewed it back on, and he says the burning doesn't bother him. That can't be a good thing. I'm tired. Damned if the show doesn't wear me out. What the fuck? Flip, kill the twist. Use the knife, do it fast. This ain't the movies. They don't stay unconscious for hours. Slash the neck all the way through both the windpipe and jugular. Then leave the knife in the heart for safekeeping. Do the right thing. The right thing? The smart thing. The only thing. Do it. Now. Sam isn't going to like this. What? Sam isn't going to like it. That's not how this goes. Sam's got nothing to do with this. This is cloud work. You think he's going to sit on his bat wings while some arc who replaced him in the fix posts three doms in the show to wipe his ass? What do you know about arcs and doms? You're just some flip. A dead flip. Yeah, a dead flip. Sam. You're saying I should get to him before he gets to me. I ain't say nothing. I'm dead, remember? <laughs> Shit. Something strange is going on, Smiley been having weird dreams. So? Well, first off, angels don't dream. What? How do you see the future, then? What? Or talk to spirits of the dead? Uh, we don't. Oh. Because second off, angels don't sleep. Oh. I think some <laughs> shit is going to go down if I don't talk to Sam. So go talk. I can't with these doms I got guarding me. I was going to ask you about them. They follow you everywhere? Everywhere. And who's Sam, anyways? You might know him better as the devil. Ah, uh, or Satan. Yeah, but Satan's not a name, it's a title. Sar Samael a Satan. Prince Samael the Accuser. It was his job to prosecute. Ever read the book of Job? In the Bible? Yeah. Then shit, no. <laughs> so how does a lowly talker Markheim dial up the devil? You asking me? Yeah, come to think of it. Where's the lowest, foulest place in town? Mm. Hard to pick. Think nasty, hurtful. Oh, the Metro dig. Huh? They tortured a big, nasty metal worm to chew its way through Seattle's guts under Capitol Hill. <laughs> Didn't even think twice about what might be buried under there. Sounds promising. Can you take me there? Shit. It's important, Smiley. It's always important with you, Markheim. Just this last favor. I'm telling you, something ain't right in this city. Please. Fine. Let's go. Well, wait a second. What now? How am I supposed to get past these dom guards? Jeez, oh, Markheim. I gotta think of everything for you. Come on. Just follow me into this Tully's. <laughs> Next time on Markheim. I told you, this tunnel's got bad medicine. 
The deeper we go, the worse it gets. Then let's go deeper. Hello? Testing, one, two, three. Hey, Sam, it's the Markheim. Can you hear me? We need to talk. I found the lowest, foulest, baddest, medicine-infested place from which to place my call, thanks to my good friend Smiley. Hey, don't be mentioning my name. Heard they sewed your glowing hand back on. Stank said it doesn't burn anymore. That's bullshit. It still burns, never stops. No one deserves it more. If anyone tried to take it from me, I'd kill them, Mark. That's the God's honest truth. I'd kill you. Much as I hate to say it, Didge, you ain't got that particular trick in you. <laughs> I'll ask Veronica next time I see her. Hey, Veronica, Mark says I can't kill him. What do you think? Veronica. Who's Veronica? Hello, Markheim. Remember me? Think so. Demon Choker, name of Mara, right? That's right. Wasn't sure at first. Hard to recognize you without the cowardly ambush. Didn't think that was necessary. Didn't you? You don't think there was a Markheim in the room with Judas at the end? You don't think there was one with the kid in the wilderness? Tell Sam I talk to him or nobody. Tune in for the next episode of Markheim. Because things can always get uglier, right? <gasps> of Art, adapted from the story by Anton Chekhov. Ah, dear lad. Well, how are we feeling? What good news do you have for me? Sasha Smirnov, the only son of his mother, holding under his arm something wrapped up in number 223 of the financial news, stepped into Dr. Koshelkov's consulting room. Mama sends her greetings to you, Ivan Nikolaevich, and told me to thank you. I am the only son of my mother, and you have saved my life. You have brought me through a dangerous illness, and we do not know how to thank you. Nonsense, lad. I only did what anyone else would have done in my place. I am the only son of my mother. Uh, we are poor people and cannot, of course, repay you, and we are quite ashamed, doctor. Although, however, Mama and I, the only son of my mother, earnestly beg you to accept, in token of our gratitude, an object of great value, an antique bronze, a rare work of art. You shouldn't. What's this for? No, please do not refuse. You will wound Mama and me by refusing. It's a fine thing. It was left us by my deceased father, and we have kept it as a precious souvenir. We insist that you take it here. It was a not very tall candelabra of old bronze and artistic workmanship. On a pedestal stood female figures in the costume of Eve and in attitudes for the description of which I have neither the courage nor the fitting temperament. The figures were smiling coquettishly and altogether looked as though had it not been for the necessity of supporting the candlesticks, they would have skipped off the pedestal and have indulged in an orgy such as is improper for the listener even to imagine. <laughs> Yes, it certainly is a fine thing, but uh, how shall I express it? The doctor slowly scratched behind his ear, cleared his throat, <clears> throat> and blew his nose irresolutely. 
It's, um, it's not quite for family reading. It's not simply décolleté, but beyond anything dash at all. How do you mean? The devil himself could not have invented anything, so... So... Why, to put such a phantasmagoria on the table would be defiling the whole office. What a strange way of looking at art, Doctor. Why, it is an artistic thing. Look at it. There is so much beauty and elegance, it fills one's soul with a feeling of reverence and brings a lump into one's throat. One forgets everything earthly. Only look how much movement, what atmosphere, what expression. I understand all that very well, my dear boy, but you know... I am a family man. My children run in here. Ladies come in. Of course, if you look at it from the point of view of the crowd, then this exquisitely artistic work may appear in a certain light. But, doctor, rise above the crowd, especially as you will wound Mama and me by refusing it. I am the only son of my mother. You have saved my life. We are giving you the thing most precious to us, and I only regret that I don't have the matching candelabra so I might present the pair to you. Thank you, my dear fellow. I am very grateful. Well, give my respects to your mother, but really consider my children run in here. Ladies come through my office. Uh, uh, however, let it remain. I see there's no arguing with you. Ah, put the candelabra here by this vase. What a pity we don't have the match to it. I wish we could give you the pair. Well, goodbye, doctor. The doctor looked for a long time at the candelabra. It's a superb thing. There's no denying it. It would be a pity to throw it away. But it's impossible for me to keep it. Hmm. Here's a problem. To whom can I make a present of it? Or to what charity can I give it? Hold on! I still owe my good friend Uhav for some legal business. Perfect! It would be awkward for him as a friend to take money from me, and it will be very suitable for me to present him with this. I will take him, the devilish thing. Luckily, he is a bachelor and easygoing. <laughs> Without further ado, the doctor put on his hat and coat, took the candelabra, and went off to Uhov's. Ivan! What an unexpected pleasure. Come in. How are you, friend? I've come to see you to thank you for your efforts, and since you won't take money, you must at least accept this gift. See, my dear fellow, isn't it magnificent? Ha! Ah! <laughs> How delightful! <laughs> what a specimen! <laughs> to think of someone imagining such a thing. <laughs> Exquisite. Ravishing. <laughs> Where did you get hold of such a delightful piece? But then Uhav looked timidly toward the door. Only, you must carry off your present, my boy. I can't take it. But why not? Why not? Because my mother is here at times. My clients. Besides, I should be ashamed for my servants to see it. Nonsense, nonsense. Don't you dare refuse. It's a work of art. What movement, what atmosphere, what expression. If one could plaster it over or stick on fig leaves. No, no, it's a gift, really. Please take it. I won't take no for an answer. <laughs> and dashing out of the flat, Yvonne went home, glad that he had succeeded in getting the present off his hands. Uhav examined the candelabra, fingered it all over, and then, like the doctor before him, racked his brains over the question of what to do with the present. Mmm. Mm, it's a fine thing. And it would be a pity to throw it away, and improper to keep it. The very best thing would be to make a present of it to someone. I know what! I'll take it to Shushkin. The rascal loves things like this, and he has a performance tonight. The whole evening, 
dressing. The comic actor's dressing room was besieged by men coming to admire the present. May I come in? Uh, no, no, my dear, I'm not dressed. What am I to do with the horrid thing, for God's sake? It's not a photograph that you can put in a drawer. You had better sell it, sir. There's an old woman living about here who buys bronzes. Go and inquire for Madame Smirnov's antiques shop. And that is just what Shashkin did. Two days later, the doctor was sitting in his consulting room, meditating on the acids of bile when... Sasha! Doctor, imagine my delight. Can you believe it? Look what I found. I have succeeded in picking up the match to your candelabra. <laughs> Ivan Nikolaevich was speechless. The following message is brought to you by Little Bit Therapeutic Writing Center. Yeah. Yeah. Trollop. Trollop, Ginger. Uh, dude, that's kind of an inappropriate phrase, man. I, I'm just trying to get this dang horse to trollop. What do you mean by trollop? It's a cross between a trot and a gallop. I just invented it. Uh, gotcha. But why are you riding the horse? Because I'm here volunteering for the Little Bit Therapeutic Riding Center. Okay? I'm going to show them all my tricks. Yeah, come here. No, no, no. But, dude... It's the clients that are supposed to ride the horses, not the volunteers. What? Look around, man. See all the kids and adults with disabilities learning to ride and connect with all the horses? We're supposed to assist with their riding. Wait. You mean we don't get to ride? Nope. That's so lame. No, not really, dude. See, throughout the year, Little Bit Therapeutic Riding Center in Woodenville serves people with physical, cognitive, and emotional disabilities through therapeutic horsemanship. In fact, the relationship that develops between a horse and a rider is proven to reduce anxiety, encourage confidence, and instill a greater sense of accomplishment and empowerment. Plus, there are tons of great physical benefits. Increased core strength, refined motor skills, better balance, the list goes on and on. Yeah? Yeah, so the deal is each rider works with a trusted, accepting four-legged partner and is assisted by attentive and encouraging instructors and volunteers. That's where you come in. I can be encouraging. No doubt. <laughs> Whoa! Ginger! Relax, lady. I'm coming down. Oh, she wasn't much good at trolloping anyway. Come on. I want to introduce you to your first rider. Awesome sauce! For more information about the Little Bit Therapeutic Riding Center, our services, and how you can get involved, go to littlebit.org today. That's little b i t dot o r g. O r g. Sound Thieves by Emily Conbert. All right. Let's get you all tucked in now. Teeth brushed? Very good. Now, this is the story of a little boy named Oliver who never, ever smiled. Like, he was kind of an asshole, and he was only five years old. But it wasn't his fault. No, it wasn't. So listen closely. Snuggle in. Grandma's going to tell you a bedtime story. Then they stole the voices of real people. The sound thieves started stealing emotions. That's what happened to you, Oliver. Thanks for the insult. Then the sound thieves started to steal it all. The sound of the ocean, the glow of a cheek, or a person's ability to hope. No one knew if the sound thieves were the government, or a bunch of bandits, 
or scientist working towards PhDs? <laughs> Oliver! Ginny, let's go! The zoo opens at nine! I can't go. I've saved for years for your ticket. I can't. You will. I won't. You have to. I don't. Stop! Don't be a sound thief! Don't, don't cut me off! Don't be selfish! I'm buying your ticket to the zoo! Jenny and Gloria were sisters. I can't go. I'm off to Pike Place Market. For what? Your spiced tea and Beecher's cheese can shove it. I can see what I've come to mean to you after all these years. Oliver, no more smashing plates. It's a form of expression, Mother. <laughs> Jesus, so morose. Any child with no smile would be. Go to the zoo without me, Gloria. Put the money for my ticket towards Oliver's therapy fund. The zoo will be terrible without you. It's terrible already since the sound thieves got to it. Silent zoos are so depressing. Well, what's so interesting down at the market, anyway? There's a man who says he sells the stolen sounds. He's a middleman for the sound thieves. And you want your husband's voice back? I wouldn't get the whole voice, but I heard he has snippets and parcels of prior conversations and little bits of secrets and dirty talks. And what about animal sounds? And I want my husband's song back, the one he used to sing at midnight with his band outside my window. What were they called? The Wet Daydreams. That's right. <laughs> Classic. And I have saved and I've sold, and Johnson doesn't know a thing about it. I sold our couch and my shoes and Henry's wallet with cash in it and, and our house. You really want to hear his voice. I am. I'm sick of him talking with bells. If I hear another bell... You'll wring his neck? <laughs> I am so fucking sick of bells. At least your husband smiles at you, Oliver. Look, I gotta go. I I'm coming with you. Oliver, get your mittens. We're off to the market. How can I when I'm so downtrodden? Leave me alone. Money, is this really through the fish? <laughs> Tim. You're so inconspicuous. Don't screw this up, Gloria. How could you say You that? have the tendency. I have not. Just don't fuck it up. That is all. That's all? I could say more, but I won't. This market is a mockery. Oliver. <laughs> You're way too young to be so judgmental. Just take my corpse away, Mother. Let's go approach him. Ready, Ginny? I'm ready. Hello, sir. Come in, come in. I got silver rings, copper brooches, pearl headbands. We didn't come here for jewelry, sir. Oh? I've come for sounds. My sister, too. Get in here. Now, nobody says a word out of line. You didn't see me. You don't know me. You think you know me? You're wrong. You don't know me. Nobody knows me. You have a name tag on. Is that your name, Barry? No, you didn't see that. <laughs> And no cops. No cops. What about her? Yeah, sure, no cops. I don't trust you. Why not? I never trust a beautiful woman. Um, not always beautiful. Yeah, what about the boy? What about him? If he says a word, I'll track him down and give him a taste of my mind. You hear that, son? I'll track you down I'd and I'll... I'd rather murder five dogs than give you the time of day. He didn't mean that. <laughs> Listen. Barry. No! I'm hoping, desperately hoping, that you have the sound of my husband's voice. Who's your husband? The nickname was Johnson. <laughs> Harry Johnson? I don't think so. Long Johnson? <laughs> no. Do you have the sounds of the band, The Wet Daydreams? <gasps> of course I do. The Wet Daydreams are classic. Johnson! He's my husband. He doesn't associate with them as much now. The band drifted after he lost his voice. But he was the lead singer. Yeah, yeah, I got it here. It's got uh, guitar, drums, Johnson's voice, all right, and, and the triangle. I'd love it. I'd love to buy it. Oh, to hear that song again. How much is it? Oh, I'll take uh, 100. I only have 50. Perfect. I'm only selling half the song. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Just this brown little box here? The sound's in the box. Just turn the dial. It only works one time, so use it wisely. It's not labeled. Thieves don't use labels. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Wait, I'd like to buy something, too. But you don't have I'd any... like to buy some zoo sounds, please. Whatever you've got. But Gloria... What do you have for sounds at the zoo? Well, now I got uh, individual animals or a cacophony. 
How much is the difference between the individual or the cacophony? Individual zoo animals are 25. A cacophony is 50. I only got $20. Prices are prices. I can also throw in Ginny's extra zoo ticket money. And that still doesn't add up to 50. And I, I've got my dignity. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'll give you my dignity, sir. <laughs> Oh, you don't say. In the back room, real fast, if you want me to. Fast and discreet, and then us sisters will just be leaving with our little boxes of sound. Hmm. Fast, and, fast and discreet. That's right. Let's go. Hee-haw. <laughs> Gloria was acting badly. That wasn't appropriate of Gloria. <laughs> Why can't someone steal their voices? <laughs> oh, Oliver, can't you stop sniffling? How can you expect me to stop crying? I'm abandoned as an infant by my only hero, left with a mother who sulks and scorns and either dismisses me or smothers me, yet she's all I have. And now she gives away all we've got, all either of us got, her dignity. It isn't right. I shall not be able to smile ever or experience an instant of joy. I'm doomed to pity in dark days. Oh, Ollie. <coughs> your mother loves you, and so does your aunt. My heart is too cold to accept your warmth. Shh, here she comes. Fast and discreet. Let's go. Get the boxes and let's go. What happened? We were in the middle of it. Gross. And the sound thieves stole them. They stole them right out of my head. <gasps> Are they still here? Make a run for it. <laughs> Good. Good. Good Lord. I didn't know I could still run. I didn't know I could leap through barbed wire like that. Pity how you trampled our neighbor's lawn, Mother. All right, then. Let's part here. We're off to the zoo. And I'm off to find my husband. Wait. Which box is which? Huh? Which box is my husband's song, and which box is the sounds of the zoo? <laughs> oh, fuck. I'll take this one. You sure that's the right one? I'm sure of it. Tickets, please. Here you go. Through the gate, then. Over there. So silent. All the animals just look up and deadpan. Can your sounds in the box cheer them up? I don't know. I believe in you, Oliver. This is your gift. All right, then. Pick your favorite animal. The red panda, I suppose. Excellent. Hello, panda. Now give him the box, Oliver, and, and see if he winds it and if he can bring back the sounds to the zoo. Just hand it to him through the bars? Yes. There. Good job. Look, he's winding up the box. Under the moonlight, the look in your eyes falls from the window. Darling, I cry. Oh, shit. Jenny's. Jenny's gonna kill me. Look, Mom, he's beckoning the zookeeper over. He's got a microphone. Panda's got a microphone. That tiger's got a guitar. And, and the monkeys are playing the drums. The side of your head. Yes, darling. I sold everything. But the surprise I have for you is priceless. Johnson, this box, there's something magical in it. Mm -hmm. Something that will remind you of us as teenagers. A moonlit night, your band singing, falling in love. 
It's your voice. Go on now, listen to it. Uh, just turn that dial there. spent everything, Johnson. I spent everything we had. I spent everything, Oliver. Everything we had. The sight of your smile makes my heart race. And when we are dancing, wet daydreams, wet day. Oliver? Mother? You're smiling. I'm happier than I have ever been, Mother. I'm positively elated. That is wonderful, darling. So, so wonderful. I wouldn't give up your smile for the world. And I hope one day that Ginny forgives me. I'm sure she will when she sees your beaming little face. I'm so sorry, Johnson. I love you. And that's all there is to it. And so you see, grandson, that is the story of little Oliver and the sound thieves, and how one day his mama gave him his smile back. And you must always hold deeply close to you those things you take for granted, because one day the sound thieves could stop by your crib, little darling, and take your voice or your thoughts or your grandma away. <laughs> All right. Good night, then. <laughs> Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug. <laughs> <laughs>
to Sandbox Radio 5, An Unexpected Twist, recorded on July 23, 2012, at West of Lennon in Seattle, Washington. This episode was sponsored in part by the Sandbox Artists Collective and a grant from 4Culture. Sandbox Radio is made possible by the generous financial contributions of listeners like you. To make a donation and to access our podcast archive, visit us online at thesandboxac.org. Now back to Episode 5, An Unexpected Twist. The following message is brought to you by World Arts Access. Great party, huh? Yeah. So, uh, what do you do? What's your game? I work with World Arts Access. You're kidding. No, really. World Arts Access. Never heard of it. Well, our mission is to provide access to arts. We're based in Washington State, but we reach out to youth around the world. Like the old Coke commercial. Excuse me? You know, where they're on that hill and I'd like to buy the world a Coke and keep it company. No. (laughs) See, we provide training, performance, support to impoverished communities. Hey, Sally! Come here! Hey, Sally! Hey! World Arts Access engages youth to create lasting social transformation through the arts. Huh? He's kidding! (laughs) This is the guy who wrote that Coke commercial. (laughs) You know about teaching the world to sing and drink Coke? Actually, we've been teaching them radio production skills. I don't think I know that one. Oh, sure you do. I mean, it was a little before your time. <laughs> Look, it's like we are the world, but on a hillside in Italy. I love that song. We are the world. We are the champions. We'll keep on fighting till the end. We're all working on a project with Seattle Youth and Jack Straw Productions. No time for losers. the world to sing with snow white turtle doves. We have a website, worldartsaccess.org. Hey, you guys have it all wrong. Thank you. What this guy means is World Arts Access is like hands across America. Oh, no. Did that even work? I didn't even come close. Hundred mile gaps in the desert. Speaking of filling gaps, can I tell you about World Arts Access and what we did in Yemen? <sighs> I don't even know where Yemen is. Now, if Hands Across America had been smart, they'd have used cats. With cats, they could have connected the entire globe. Yes, that is what I mean. Connecting the globe, but without the cats. 
But if you go to worldartsaccess.org, we can show you... Pictures of cats? No! Man, I wanted to be on the hill with those kids drinking a Coke and singing. I wish I could have seen Queen before Freddie died. Cats? What a word with cats. Oh, wouldn't that have been paws across America? <laughs> <laughs> Want to know where Yemen is? First go to worldartsaccess.org to find out all about our work there and how you can join in to support the transformative power of education in the arts. Then go buy the world a go. Cause we are the champions of the world. by Reginald Andre Jackson. Truth is a dog, says our mightiest bard, and this one's wet. The smell of her hide hits hard, like a toddler's smile when he first finds his feet. A wild musky stench besmirches the air. You re-swallow your lunch, smile like it ain't no thing. But that's Seattle for you. <laughs> Summer in the city, and the weather is cracked. Thunder and heat meet. Haters of LeBron deal their hearts to Miami. This isn't real. I play it off. My work is play. I'm an actor. But see, I but play at being Edgar, and the beast bites my back. Might this truly be real? Is it lightning? or some lunatic scissors taking me down by the leg. Mouth clenched tight, arms strained against leather. Maybe if I can just shift my left butt cheek, some comfort will come. In its stead, the stab. <laughs> oh, fuck! Hold it, the kid's here. Can't feed him fear. <gasps> fuck, 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 fuck! Must be some basketball metaphor I can lay on him, keep him strong. But it's a sonic rumble down a feckless street and... Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> With the fall of each tear, a title's waved away. Parent, grown up, out the whine seeps like a pig on a spit. A baby I am now, my child, far outstripping me in years. The nape of his neck? Nestled within tiny palms, legs crossed, he climbs deeper into the puppies on the screen. Ambulance. <coughs> EMTs with razor clam carts, hard metal at my back. The parade float that is me bobs its way into the rain. No way, this is real. Bumpy rides, MRIs, doctors, and ice. In come the coats with their blood pressure cuffs, the date of your birth, the IV prick, the waiting. In come the surgeons with his talk of knives and bone. No, I say. So it's little paper cups and pills, pills, pills. All oh, these endless sciatic nights. Yes, there are times when things get too real. It's all right, I tell myself, I'm not here. I am not here. I am not here. I am not here. The fair is anything but. I take my son by the hand. We enter. Illusion and reality collide. It's all new to him. I'm hip to the carnies with their hustlers' tents and pink sugar clouds. At three, he's two inches shy to ride most rides. I stand witness to the decimation of his first corn dog <laughs> and put him on painted ponies. I consider the lunacy of the carnival. Next ride he has the height for, we're on it. Buckled down together, we enter. 
the haunted house. Crazy lights, horrid noise, darkness, grotesque, misshapen figures jerk mechanically about. 30 second money eaters shoot. My thoughts of these tacky 30 second money eaters shoot to those of the three year old strapped in beside me. Quietly, he stares on. Brightness. From out the car we come, he gifts me with the face he wore in. I swing him unto me, that's my boy. We find there is a little tyke section. He now flies, drives semis, floats. I point my pocket computer at him like all the others. Another corn dog, then home. <laughs> How was it, asked mother to son. The rides were fun, but the people in the cages scared me. Daddy told you they weren't real, right? They were real to me. Real to me. Hmm. Say, you remember that Cheryl Lynn cut? I want to say 78, 79. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. To be real. What's real to me is that reality seems intangible, prepackaged, demographically designed, distorted. It screams from our TV. We are so comfortable, so set in our way, so tethered to our tablets, phones, earbuds, that even the hail of bullets and bar stools can only shake us from our caffeinated ways for a matter of weeks. Then it's back to bitching about the weather, forgetting how livid we were last Thursday when we couldn't find our shades. But these may only be the lies I tell myself when I feel that I am real. What I know to be true is that my love is peach. My boy is a joy. And I'll give it to him real. I want to tell him like Chappelle said, you came from my balls, son. <laughs> I'll tell him straight, we were robbed of the Sonics. <laughs> I'll tell him, we had a man who would reign. I'll say, once upon a time, there was a much cherished glove. And when it shine, fell prey to time, its rough and weathered hide cast far aside. For many years then, many did turn to Jesus. But that was before he came, that boy. With him, the darkness did descend, and a numbness choked the land. But swing wide of it, son, when all's uncertain, droop not in apathy. Don't dare despair, dig deep, rally. Heffron. That's it. There you go. Ouch, ouch, Jesus. Be gentle. Josh. Hey, baby. What are you wearing? That's so not funny. Where are you? Still at work. Now it's 8.30. Yeah, we had to order pizza. The extreme waterbed account is going tits up. I could really use your help putting Akron to bed. Megalosaurus. Speaking of tits, how's your mastitis? Horrible. It hurts like hell. And I'm getting a serious fever. Oh, that was so intense this morning. What? Your entire boob just, like, totally inflamed. Yeah? Streaks of red shooting out from your nipple. Okay. Like wild fucking kingdom or something. I tried to describe it to the team. Josh! <laughs> What the hell? None of the gross details, babe. You know, just the concept. Great. Uteraptor. Uh, Uteraptor. I mean, we talked about it all through lunch. Mommy! What comes after Uteraptor? Torvosaurus. So how late are you 
it going to be? Well, this one looks like an all-nighter. What? But I've got a post tonight. Mindy. My page views are totally sinking. Forget the blog. You've got mastitis. Just put the kids to bed. Whoa. <laughs> Did you just tell me to forget the blog? I'm just saying that maybe... I am an influencer, Josh. I am a trend forecaster. I hold sway over thousands of lactating women from coast to coast. Yeah, I know, but... No, Josh. That blog is my life. The one bit of my world I have control over. Hell, Mindy, how can you be a shining example for breastfeeding when you've got this massive infection? It's one of my 13 challenges, okay? Mommy! Look, babe, I'll be home as soon as I can. Not good enough. Oh, shh, 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 sweetie. Mommy, I know exactly how old you are. Inside voice, please, Akron. Can't you see Dayton's upset? You're 34 years, 5 months, 2 weeks, 6 days, 17 hours, 31 minutes, and 7 seconds old, right, Mommy? Oh, there you go. Right? How about you go and play with your new Lego Batman, too? No! He scares me. He doesn't have a face. Okay, okay. So, go count your connects. All my connects? Yes, all of them. Every single one. Yay! Shh! 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 Hey, oh, pumpkin boy. Oh, look what I got for you. Yeah. Third time's the charm. Oh, wow. It's so warm in here. Hot. Are you hot, sweetheart? Let me just put my keyboard right on your head. There we go. Everybody happy now? Okay. Hey, all you mommy blissheads out there. How's it hanging? LOL. But seriously, it's time for a momversation, TM. It's been a super challenging week for yours truly. Last Tuesday, I came down with the big M, sad face, that nasty old infection that must not be named. Oh well. Luckily, Josh is soups understanding and right here by my side. And little Akron is so sweet and concerned for his sick mommy. And baby Dayton just keeps sucking away. In fact, the entire fam is weathering the storm with flying colors, thanks to a number of special products that are now a big part of my Mommy Bliss brand. Especially those booby tubes breast packs I ran on a twofer last month. Mommy! Mommy's blogging, Akron. And Nina's no-nonsense nipple butter has really... I finished counting all my connects! Well, count them again! No! Now, if only the antibiotics my doctor gave me would start to take down this fever, I'd be all set for a mambo margarita and sexy date night with my totes handsome husband, Josh, at Ruby Tuesdays, TM. <laughs> Aren't I just the luckiest nursing mom ever? Our sexual fire just goes and goes. And we're deaf lucky that Red Devil condoms are part of our product suggest for this month. Gee. Jesus. It really is hot. Hey, Mommy, guess what? Everything poops. Everyone poops, Akron. No! Everything! See? Poop on my connects! What? On my connects! <laughs> on my Batman with no face! Oh my god! Poopy you be on the kitty! Akron! No! Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> la, 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 losing it, Mindy! Who? Who are you? I am La Lacta! Your mastitis induced psychotic break, TM. TM, 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 TM. Wait, where did you come from? Does it matter? This is a psychotic break. Have fun with the concept, Mindy. Have sex with me. What? <laughs>
You know you want to. I've seen you trolling those sites. I'm your own personal brand of sexy, generated entirely from your subconscious. Wow. Your thighs are enormous. Yes, they are. Poopy on the sofa. Poopy on the rug. And you do look a little like Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg's just the tip of the iceberg, baby. Who else? Maybe Samuel L. Jackson? Si, si, senorita! And the bassist from Rancid? But you're missing somebody special, Mindy. I am? A significant member of your erotic like list. Um, Sammy Hagar, maybe? Dig a little deeper. Oh, wait. Oh, you don't mean... Speak that which turns you on. Philip Seymour Hoffman? Bingo, buxom lady! I don't, I, I don't really think he's sexy. Oh, but you do, Mindy. You do. Wow. This is so intense. Now, be honest, offline and not for publication. When was the last time you and Josh really beat the sheets, hmm? How do you know we call it that? Do you have some kind of surveillance camera, or...? Psychotic reality check, Mindy. c come to Jesus. Oh, Lactar. You're right. That's right, baby. The truth is, Josh and I haven't beat the sheets in ages. I mean, between all the feedings and the sudden leaks and the stinking breast pads, he pretty much just takes a rain check. In fact, I haven't beaten anything in, well, a long, long time. I mean, sometimes, Lactar, sometimes I almost wish that we'd never even gone to Ohio. <laughs> Rock and Balderdash, that is where lactation can lead. From this day forward, I command you to bottle feed. What? Look what nursing has gotten you. But aren't you the god of lactation? Yes, but that doesn't make me a slave to tradition. Your life is unmanageable, Mindy. Consider this a breastfeeding intervention. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're so right. I hate nursing. I hate it all. The weird crusties, the holster bras, the fucking hind milk. It's all so, so messy and... N-n-n-natural. Yes! Like we're animals, just cows on two feet. And we don't control anything. It's not bliss. It's not even regulated. I, I can't stand it. No, thanks, sweetheart. You just go about your business. Uh, so I can poopy up the kitchen? Certainly, sweetheart. Poopy it up. <laughs> but, Lactar, mm -hmm. what do I do about my blog and my mission statement and all those lucrative product refs I make that promise total nursing bliss and fulfillment? Truth in advertising, Mindy. What? Oh, no way. Lactar, where did you go? I've been unexpectedly transport pocket-sized. I'm now a flea balancing atop your left ear. Can you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you tickle. Hang loose, Mindy. But what about my blog? I'm diving into your hairline now. <laughs> Activists. Josh and I just put both kids to bed without a hitch, thanks to our Tennessee hollow white noise maker. Poopy on the dishwasher, poopy in the dog bowl. And now it's time to try out those great new mommy must-haves I posted yesterday, like Sally Hansen Zero Bumps Bikini Spray, TM, and, and... <laughs> Actually, all you boobets, just hang in on my every endorsement. Actually, I've never even tried Sally Hansen Zero Bumps Bikini Spray, TM. 
Yeah. Yeah. Chew on that. Because, um, unlike the doctored up photo on my website, the last time I wore a bikini was in 2007. Because, actually, I barely even shave down there anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's brush country down there. <laughs> Practically an old growth forest. <laughs> and if tiny little bumps and ingrown hairs were all I really had to worry about, I'd be having a great fucking time. <laughs> but that is not the case. Oh, no, 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 not by a long shot. So, for all you nookie nutcases out there, let me just blast some real titty talk at you, okay? First off, Dayton's teeth are coming in like a shark's, double-edged and angry. And he just about ate my right nipple for lunch. And Akron, well, hey, hey, our pediatrician recently suggested that he might have symptoms that are, quote, consistent with the autism rainbow. <laughs> like, repositioning the autism brand was going to somehow make that diagnosis go down easy. <laughs> Double fucking ha! <huh? laughs> Don't you believe it? There is no such thing as an autism rainbow. And I want to smoke. <laughs> yeah. I want a goddamn cigarette and a fifth of something, and I'm taking off this dent on nursing bra right now. Yeah. Ho, oh, ho, free at last, free at last. Christ almighty, I'm free at last. So, signing off for now, mother suckers. <laughs> But never fear, I shall return with more of the real poop. Real poop! <laughs> So please welcome to the keys, Mr. John Engerman. Thank you. 
the Zamax Radio Orchestra. A little Sousa Salsa. One of those summer days we have in the forest. Sunlight filtering through the leaves. The smell of wild flowers drifting in on a cool breeze. Birds singing, bees buzzing. God, I hate days like that. When it rains, you can blame your mood on the weather. In the winter, you can grab a bottle of booze and find some hidey hole to hibernate in for a month or two, but summer, you just gotta face the day. My name's Charday. I'm a private investigator. I don't get many clients. Don't know if that's more because I'm a woman or a squirrel. <laughs> The Bleak End of the Woods by Scott Augustin. Afternoon, Sarday. Well, if it ain't Joe Possum. Mm. What are you doing coming round here? I need a reason to come look at your bushy tail. You flirting with me, Joe? If I thought it would do any good. We gave that a shot a while back, remember? You, me, the mulberry bush, shot spot of Jack Daniels. Not a big success. No, but certainly one of my favorite failures. <laughs> However, I'm here on business. I would like to engage your services. Piss up a rope. I'm dead serious. Somebody's missing. Why don't you call the cops? Cops and me don't exactly do see do lately. What else is new? You were in trouble before you climbed out of your mama's pouch. So, who's missing? Clementine. Clementine? Good. Let that old windbag stay missing. Sure day. She'll turn up like the bad penny she is. You sure worry a lot for a possum. Sure. Sure, I went to look for her. She wasn't home. Wait. Wasn't home? Was not home. That doesn't make any sense. She's a turtle. She's always home. <laughs> no, I found her shell. Empty. Sweet motherfucking mother of God Almighty. How long can a turtle live outside her shell? Ten, twelve hours top. Let's roll. Come on. She was last seen in the meadow. <laughs> the meadow. Look at it. I haven't been here in years. Not since we were kids playing cops and robbers. As I recall, you was always the robber and me the cop. Funny now. I am not a cop. We had fun, didn't we? Hey, that rock. That's where we became blood brother and sister. Yeah. We were Apaches that spring. Yeah. Later, we used to bum cigarettes off that blind porcupine. <laughs> Carruthers. Yeah. Oh, prickly Carruthers. Remember that grass fire that we... Look out! Oh, oh no! Jeez, play dead! What the hell is that? A hoof or an amber! Oh, look! It's Alfie the Moose! But gee, he chopped up on something. Alfie! Chill the fuck out! Pills! Pills to 
took them, took the pills. Should not have taken the pills, but I took them. Did I? Pills, pills, pills. Took all of them, all of them. Every last one. Thought they were downers. Were downers? No, 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 no. Not downers. Uppers, uppers. They were. What pills, Alfie? I found them in this. <gasps> That's Clementine's pill case. Found them, took them. Say, say, what's a turtle want with speed? <laughs> Alfie, where did you find this? Took the pills, yeah, oh yeah, stream, by the stream, there they were, by the stream, gotta go, can't stand still, love you, bye. Stream! <laughs> Hey, Joe. Yeah, Sardine. What's Clementine to you? Why do you care so much? Uh, a little while back, I had a bout of uh, hepatitis. Clem's the only one who came by. She took care of me. You had hep? Yeah, laid up for months with it. I didn't know. Why didn't you call? Well, things were, you know, kind of weird between you and me for a while. Well, not so weird. I wouldn't have given an old friend a hand. I guess I didn't know that for sure. Well, now you know, Joe. The stream. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Mm. Wish I knew what we were looking for. Well, my squirrel friend, you're the detective. Sniff out a clue or two. <laughs> Joe Possum. I have sorely missed your smart-ass ways. <laughs> After we find Clem, let's not let so much to... Hey, check it out. That's gold. Hey, I know that. It's... <coughs> what the... <coughs> Mine! Mine! Well, Sandy the fucking crow. <laughs> that is Clementine. You sure? It's her wedding ring. She was married? Yeah, widowed. Her husband didn't make it back from Nam. Hand over the ring, bird. Mine! That old snapper stole it to me. Box! What? What? Clem was a box turtle, not a snapper. Whatever. She sold it to me last Thursday. Ah! Said she needed the money. Clem had money. She was on disability. Said she needed the money quick like couldn't wait. Said she was scared. Give me that ring, Sandy. Don't jump in a lake, soupy. <clears throat> Soupy! I hate that word. Like I'm not really a mammal. Like it takes a placenta to be... Oh, shut up, Joe! Shut up! <laughs> Root beer schnapps. What? Remember back in high school, a couple of weeks before graduation, we sat right here drinking root beer schnapps out of Dixie Riddle Cups. Yeah, those riddles certainly were puzzlers, <laughs> weren't they? That they were. Yeah, we, we sat right there, getting a buzz, talking about the future. Except you didn't graduate. Then you never made it to that city. Couldn't. My mom needed me. Your sister could have taken her in. But she didn't. Yeah, Char, I don't think your mom really needed you as much as you say. Joe, you don't get it. It broke my mother when that lightning hit the old hollow tree and she lost all her nuts. <laughs> Just broke her. There's plenty of nuts in the forest. She could have got more. Joe, she had six or seven pounds of nuts. And not just acorns, she had walnuts and cashews. She had a lot of nuts. <laughs> she was going to give some to her grandkids. You don't get it. You didn't have to hear her crying in the night. You didn't see her filling her cheeks with sand, pretending it was nuts. Newts, jackrabbits. 
she brought home an old skunk once. Shasha, this is your new daddy. Yeah. He's fancy. He's wearing a tuxedo. Yeah, yeah. You sure it's not your sister? <laughs> Sorry, Sade. I shouldn't be taking this out on you. Hey. Do you smell that? Perfume of some kind. What is that? White shoulders? That's what Clementine always wore. How could she afford that on SSI? Yeah, knock off, white shoulders. It's coming from this way. Look! It's a scarf. Clementine's scarf. Here's turtle tracks and... Oh, Oh, God, a bit of shelling! <sighs> this is it. This is the road. I've never been out this far. My dad was RK, so I never... Joe. Something's not right. This is all too neat. It's like we were led here. Oh, squirrel friend. I am so sorry. So very sorry. <laughs> what? It's so sad, I'll tell him. It's... I'll, I'll choke up a little bit at this point in the story. Take a deep breath and go on. She thought she saw Clementine on the other side of the road. It didn't seem so far. Just a hop over the double yellow. She never saw the Ford Taurus. Joe, they'll ask why you didn't bring the body back. I'll just lower my beady eyes to the ground and tell them they didn't really want to see. Better to remember you as you were. Forever frisky. Why, Joe? You can't understand. Just can't. What it means to be a possum. It's the curse of being an omnivore. Because omnivore really does mean omni. It's not about what I want to do. It's about what I need to do. <laughs> I'm a soup. Can I say one thing before you chew out my neck? Yeah. Sure, baby. Time spent with you were some of the best of my life. You showed me what living was. Being with you, even just talking shit about tomorrow that would never come. That was living. It was always like you were my other half. The hours we shared were too short. I've always loved you so much. But all that time, in the back of my mind, I kept telling myself, reminding myself, he's a marsupial. <laughs> a poucher. And pouchers can't be trusted. But you should have listened to yourself. I did, Joe. Took my own advice. And please know, baby, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. when I'm dead. Promise me that. That I can do. But, Sade, baby, make sure I'm really dead, not just playing. <laughs> You'll be dead, Joe. I'll make damn sure. Will you, will you make sure the other possums don't eat me? Joe. I'm just a squirrel. Oh, no, Sade. You were never just a squirrel. Kind of peaceful here by the room. Yeah. 
It is peaceful in its own kind of way. <laughs> Sandbox Radio was sponsored in part by the Sandbox Artist Collective and a grant from Four Culture. It was recorded on July 23, 2012 at West of Lennon in Seattle, Washington. Sandbox Radio is made possible by the generous financial contributions of listeners like you. To make a donation or to access our podcast archive, visit us online at thesandboxac.org. <laughs>